starting off this countdown, we have Donald Harvey, aka the Angel of Death. Donald Harvey is a nurse turned serial killer. So he was working in a hospital as a nurse and was secretly killing off his patients. To him, he was doing them a favor. He thought that his chronically ill patients needed a relief from the pain. So he would smother them with pillows or would poison them or let their oxygen tanks run out. It's believed that he took the lives of over 70 people. However, in 1987, he was only convicted for 37 counts of murder. He was sentenced to life plus 20 years. In March of 2017, Harvey was beat up badly by a fellow inmate. He passed away shortly after. In our number nine spot today, we have the Golden State Killer. The Golden State Killer is one of the most famous serial killers of all time, and he managed to elude police for 30 years. From 1973 to 1986, the GSK was responsible for taking the lives of 13 people, harming 50, and 100 20 different burglaries all across California. Throughout the investigation process, he used different tactics to both taunt and threaten police and victims, which is just another level of being messed up. If you don't know how this story ends, buckle up though, because it is wild. So you know those like family DNA tests, like 23andMe, where you send in your DNA and then they send you back your genealogy? Well, basically, these kinds of services helped identify who the real Golden State Killer was. In 2018, when Detective Paul Holes and FBI lawyer Steve Kramer uploaded the Golden State Killer DNA profile, which they were able to obtain from the crime scenes, to the website GED Match. They were able to find 10 to 20 people who had the same great, great, great grandparents as this DNA match. From there, a genealogist made a large family tree, and then they were able to single out two main suspects. After covertly collecting DNA samples from one of the suspects and comparing them to the crime scene DNA, they were finally able to arrest Joseph James D. Angelo, who is the Golden State Killer. After decades of waiting, the victims of his crimes were finally able to see justice served as he was sentenced to 12 life sentences plus eight years. He was spared the death penalty because he admitted to numerous crimes he had perpetrated, some of which he wasn't even being charged for. He is now 75 years old and will definitely spend the rest of his life in prison. In our eighth spot, we have Ronnie McPeters. Now, Ronnie McPeters has actually been deemed too insane to execute. So Ronnie was first arrested after taking the life of a 27 year old woman. The woman, Linda Marie Baltazar, was running errands when Ronnie came up to her window while panhandling. She shooed him away and he left, but he ended up coming back and shooting her. He was first placed in jail for his crime and then placed in the rubber room. But that didn't stop him because he was known to set fires in the jail and harass other inmates. So they moved him to San Quentin prison where he was awaiting death row. And that's when he started acting even crazier Crazier. Apparently, he would attack other prisoners and guards, and was known to smear his feces all over his cell and even himself. This behavior got him off of death row. They literally thought that he was far too troubled to be executed. In our seventh spot, we have Mark Chopper Reed. Mark Reed is an Australian criminal who lived a life of crime. He was known to rip off drug dealers as well as he would kidnap and torture members of the criminal underworld. It's believed that he was responsible for the death of 19 people and the attempted murder of 11 others. In fact, the movie Chopper is based off of his life and it's a wild movie. The things he would do were insane. For example, he had a fellow inmate cut both of his ears off so that he could leave H Division and be transferred to a different wing. He also once played Russian roulette with himself. Who does that for fun? In our sixth spot today, we have Jeffrey Dahmer. Jeffrey Dahmer is one of the most famous serial killers in the world. People all around the world know of him and the sadistic and disturbing crimes that he committed. From 1978 to 1991, Jeffrey murdered and dismembered 17 male individuals. What he did afterwards was even more disturbing. He would keep some of the body parts as souvenirs, even take photographs of the deceased. When police searched his home, they found it littered with human remains. Dahmer was finally arrested on July 22nd of 1991. However, while in prison, there were multiple attempts on his life. On November 28th, 1994, an inmate, Christopher Scarver, finally succeeded at taking Dahmer's life. 
His reasoning behind this? Well, apparently Dahmer was known to taunt others in prison. He would do this by making his prison food look like severed limbs to taunt the other people. He would even drizzle ketchup on top of his blood. Christopher and others found this very unnerving, so he decided to take action against him and beat him to death. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with Jason Barnum, aka better known as Eyeball Man. And that's because he literally has a tattoo on his eyeball. Like, he tattooed it completely black. If that doesn't speak volumes about who he is, then I don't know what does. He also has one side of his face tattooed to look like a skull. So not only does this dude look like a scary prisoner, but he is one. This dude has a long list of crimes under his belt, including possession of heroin, first degree attempted murder, first degree burglary, and third degree felony and possession of a weapon. In fact, he was sentenced to 22 years in jail after shooting a police officer. Moving on to number four, we have Nico Jenkins. This guy is one of the scariest inmates in the world. Some say he's the craziest inmate in the world, and you're about to find out why. One time, he killed a man just because he stared at him the wrong way. Not only that, but in court, Jenkins was known to speak in some weird language. He said he used this language to communicate with an Egyptian serpent god. And this god was the one giving him orders to kill people. He also enjoyed talking about the people he killed and smiled the whole time while doing so. In the end, he was convicted for killing four individuals. Moving on to number three, we have Damien Folks. In 2002, Damien Folks was sentenced to 12 years for a series of armed robberies that he had committed. But while in jail, he committed even more crimes. In 2010, he attempted to kill another prison inmate. He made a DIY shank by melting a razor blade onto plastic cutlery, and he used it to slice a guy's throat. As a result, he was transferred to a higher security prison. But that did not stop him. A year later, he killed an inmate by strangling him to death with strips of his bedding. These attacks gained him the title of being an extremely dangerous prisoner. In our second spot today, we have Alexander Pikushkin. Alexander is a Russian serial killer who wanted to complete the number of squares on a chessboard by killing 64 people. It's said that he has killed around at least 49 individuals and possibly as many as 60. In fact, he was inspired by another serial killer, Andre Chikatilo, who I have talked about before. In his mind, he wanted to compete with him and kill even more individuals than Andre did. Now, what I find the weirdest is when Alexander was young, he was said to be such a kind and sociable child. That was until one day when he got struck in the head by a swing. From then on, his whole demeanor completely changed and he got really aggressive. So they think that this accident turned him into a serial killer. And in our number one spot today, we have Pedro Rodriguez Filho, AKA the Brazilian maniac. This guy is a Brazilian serial killer who claims to have taken the lives of 100 individuals. He started killing at a young age, one of the first kills being his father. He apparently killed his father with a machete, cut out his heart, and then chewed on it. He also has been known to kill and torture a number of gang members. He did this all before he was 18. He was arrested on May 24th of 1973, during which he was placed in a car with another criminal who he killed for no reason. And while in prison, he went on to kill more people. It's said that he took the lives of 47 inmates in jail alone. Pedro served 42 years in prison before his release in 2018. Yes, he killed that many people and then he got released. Starting us off at number 10 is Thanksgiving Turkey. User Mash Skulls shared that about a month ago they had sleep paralysis. One morning they started hearing this distorted, deep, unfamiliar voice. They started hearing more than one voice and tried to move or wake up, but they couldn't. And this is where it gets really freaking screwed up. The user saw a bunch of faceless men with razor sharp teeth coming towards them, grinding their teeth as they went. They were whispering food, food, food over and over again and were legit holding knives and forks. Now imagine being unable to control or move your body as these cannibal creatures just coming towards you. Now they surrounded the user, climbed on top of them and then carved them like a turkey. It gets graphic. They tore the user limb from limb. They went headfirst into the rest of their body like a bunch of starving hyenas. The user watched them take her own finger bones and use them as toothpicks. Can you even, like, I don't even want to imagine this. The user literally had to listen to Beethoven for three hours after the dream just to get the image of being eaten alive out of their head. And honestly, 
I don't even know what I would do in that position. Probably not Beethoven, maybe Mozart. Coming in at number nine are the cats. I will shamelessly try and include cats in every video if I can. I don't even care. I don't even care if it's relevant. Anyway, this story comes from Redditor Gabe Sky, who said they recently had a dream they were in an apartment with a few cats. That's just my dream. I mean, that's my life actually. Anyway, everything seemed pretty normal and very real until one of the cats literally up and jumped out of the balcony. The person was a bit wary, so they sat in the kitchen just to collect their thoughts. Then one of the cats just sits next to them on a different chair, except the user just can't look at the cat. It felt like looking at the sun. The cat wasn't even bright, but they just couldn't look at it. Out of the periphery of their vision, they realized the cat was morphing into something else entirely. This menacing creature with a disturbing face. It morphed into some humanoid creature and the user couldn't see its body but its face was pale and square and had no features whatsoever except two eyes. The user immediately feels like the whole world is just closing in on them and they wake up but the creature is still there getting closer. Realizing they're not actually awake yet, they somehow willed their unconscious body to fall off the bed in order to actually wake up. They ended up blacking out after they fell off the bed and refused to sleep alone for four Four days. Honestly, this is very impressive that they willed themselves to wake up when they were asleep. I feel like I wouldn't even know how to do that. At number eight, we have the woman. Honestly, I feel like everyone can somehow relate to this story, and I'll tell you why after. So this person shared one of the most terrifying dreams and said they actually suffer from really bad sleep paralysis. They have a rocking chair in their bedroom, and I don't know why they do. That's literally the first thing to get haunted, if anything. Like, why? Either way, one night they were laying on their bed, unable to move and they looked at the chair. There was a pale grey woman on the chair with blonde hair who was crying her eyes out while staring at the storyteller. And while she was crying her eyes out, she was also pulling out her insides. The person closed their eyes and they were trying everything to not see this right now and then they felt this heavy pressure on their chest. They opened their eyes and saw this woman sitting on their chest pulling out her inner organs. The storyteller was so terrified they peeked heed themselves and mind you they were 20 years old at the time. I can't even imagine the horror this person must have been going through and I always think honestly why I said it was relatable is because I always think my chair with a bunch of laundry on top is a person in the dark and I know a lot of other people get scared of that as well so I was like oh my god hashtag relatable but with the organ pulling woman I'm just like I hope that's not relatable please. Filling our number 7 slot is Gracie's mum. Not to be confused with Stacy's mum. Reddit user Rakus11 shared the story of how when she was 5 years old she had her first ever nightmare but things didn't really end even after she woke up. In her dream she was at her friend Gracie's house and they were drawing on her deck with chalk and mind you she lived on a cliff near the seaside. Views for days. Either way Gracie's mum came out and yelled at the girls for drawing on the deck and then her mum started turning into something evil. She was getting uglier and uglier and her skin had just changed shades like four times. The user could see this happening but Gracie had no idea what was going on. Either way the mum realizes the user knows she's evil and throws them both off the cliff and that's when she woke up. Now a few weeks pass after the stream and then one day Gracie isn't at school. Apparently Gracie had drowned in the pool at her house and her parents had filled the pool in, got divorced and moved straight away which is sus as hell. Either way a Eight years later, the user's brother, who wasn't even born at the time of the incident, was just walking on a trail near Gracie's old house and he goes, Gracie says hello. The user was like, what are you talking about, Cam? And all he said was, the wet girl. The user never told her brother about Gracie. He had no idea it even happened. But I feel like her dream about the evil mum had something to do with what really happened. Like, it's just too suspicious for like a couple's kid to die and then quickly just like fill up the pool and just move away. Like, it's something, something just not really sitting right with me. Now at number six is The Mask. This one was shared by an anonymous person who said one night he was watching TV in bed when out of nowhere his TV just went black. Despite turning it on from the remote a bunch of times, it just wasn't working which was weird since this had never happened before. Either way, while trying to get it to work, he ended up falling asleep. He started feeling this huge pressure on his chest and his face was getting pushed to look at the wall. Now something or someone was grabbing his face and turning it to face the ceiling now with such force he thought his jawbone was about to break. When he opened his eyes in the state, he saw this massive black figure on top of him with a mask as 
as a face that was fixed in the creepiest smile. But it wasn't even a proper mask, the thing had just drawn it on itself. It puts its finger on the guy's lips and just says shh. He then literally fainted from fear and when he woke up he made a beeline for his mum's room. And honestly, as any honest adult, I would do the same. No shame. Go to mommy's room straight away. She can protect you from all. Now coming in at number 5 is The Darkness. Now this one's from Redditor the Pixel Mouse, who has this recurring dream about a creature she dubbed The Darkness. The monster appears in two forms. The first is in human form at a crowded place, like a mall for example, and she won't even realise it's there until it starts appearing everywhere around her, and then everyone else just disappears. At this point, the darkness starts running at her in super speed, and as soon as it grabs her, she wakes up. In the second rarer form, she'll randomly be in a room and her house, and as she goes into another room, it'll go dark straight away, and she'll know she's about to get royally screwed over. Like, at least she's self aware. She knows it's happening. She knows it's coming. Even if she tries to escape this dark room, she gets pulled back in, so she just literally closes her eyes, waits for the darkness to grab her, and then she wakes up. The only thing she knows about its form is that it has long, sharp fingers, because that's all she's ever really touched. Man's eyes are closed for the rest of the time, so the monster could literally take any true form. None of us will ever know. At number four is the little girl. This one's from Reddit user pretends he knows stuff who said one summer a few years ago he had a super high fever and sleep paralysis which is probably the shittiest combo ever. Throw diarrhea into the mix and then it'd really be the shittiest combo. Pun intended. <laughs> anyway, that night he had a dream that everyone he knew was crying over this little girl and when he got close to her he realised why. The girl was missing half of her face and the guy said what a shame to her and all of a sudden the room went grey. I love how this girl's face is half missing and all he said was what a shame. Like you can come up with something better than that. Anyway, in this grey room he wakes up and sees the girl inches from his face and all she keeps saying is you did this to me. Except after saying it a bunch of time, she's not a little girl anymore, now she's like an elderly woman, and then that woman goes and jumps on his chest. Like grandma's into acrobatics lately. The guy thought his lungs were burning up and he claims that he actually prays every day still that that dream never happens to him again. May God be with you. Filling our number 3 slot is the spider. This one was shared by an anonymous user who said they dreamt they were walking through a wasteland, probably from Fallout. The game Fallout, if you guys know it, you probably do. Either way, they were with a group of people they didn't know and everything was a weird shade of either green or black. Like no other colour even existed in the stream. Either way, they entered into a ruined building and they found someone crouched down on the ground with their back to them. For some weird dream logic reason, the person just knew they knew the person who was crouching down. They were so relieved and as they went to touch the crouched person on the shoulder, everything became slow motion, like they were underwater almost. As they touched the person's shoulder, everything became normal speed again and they turned around to look at each other. Except this thing, this person, they didn't know them. The person had one eye and instead of having an iris or pupils or even whites, it was just a freaking spider as an eye. A black spider and the bits that should have been white were green. The person literally jumped awake and only when they were awake did they realise that thing was their sister. 20 years on they remember the dream in such vivid detail which goes to show how much it really scarred them. I hate insects so if I saw a cyclops person with a spider for an eye I would actually just I would offer myself. There's no hope for me now. <laughs> Done with it? <laughs> I don't want to be on this planet anymore. <laughs> Now at number 2 is the two part banshee. So this also came from an anonymous person and they recall two slightly linked dreams that they had when they were 7 years old and one right now. In the first dream they were laying in bed trying to sleep. Bored they were like let me just look at the shadows on my wall till I fall asleep. But the more they noticed the shadows the faster the shadows started moving until they fully came off the walls. They started tugging at the person's feet and all of a sudden three toddlers climbed onto the bed and if that was not creepy enough, they all had glowing yellow eyes. Like great, honestly, what else can go wrong? Love it. <laughs> Simultaneously, the three babies let out the most high pitched scream the person had ever heard before pulling them off the bed. And that was the first dream, which all in all was horrific but doable. Years and years later, the person had another dream. They were walking to the bathroom to get something from their cabinet and as soon as they closed it, they hear the same high pitched scream that the toddlers had let out all those years ago. 
When the person looked into the mirror on the cabinet, they saw that the bathtub behind them was full of blood, and a little girl was standing in the middle of it holding a freaking knife. Now, the person who was looking at this started fainting in slow motion, and as they were falling, everything just started glitching and distorting, and the girl in the tub was just smiling and smiling as she moved towards the person. <sighs> I just have to take a few deep breaths to digest this story, even though I've already read it since I've written about it. I still need to digest it again because that was too much. And finally, at number one is the basement. According to Flugu, which is this girl's username, when she was eight years old, she used to have this recurring dream that wouldn't stop for months. She even forced herself to stay awake for three whole days just so she wouldn't have to see this dream again. And honestly, if that doesn't set this story up well, nothing will. Now, in her dream, she's in her basement with her sisters getting something to drink when all of a sudden her sister's faces just start getting really weird. Their noses and mouths start shrinking and their eyes take up 90% of their face. The girl starts screaming and running up the stairs but the sister creatures grab her neck and pull her down the stairs. By the time she's fallen down all these stairs and reached the bottom, one of the sister creatures pulls her up from the neck. When the girl looks at the creature, her face becomes oddly normal and human except it's not human. She seems to have like another layer of skin on top of her face and before the flugu can even figure out what the hell is going on, the creature starts screaming like a demon. And all she can do is scream out of fear in response. The dream was so bad that the first time she had it, her mum told her she screamed for three hours straight before waking up. And that last bit really got to me because like how terrified you have to be to like literally be screaming three hours when you're unconscious. It's getting me in the feels, it's making me feel a type of way. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have Quincy Allen. Quincy Allen is a man who went on a crime spree between July and August of 2002, where he took the lives of four people. His crime spree was actually inspired while he was in prison, serving time for stealing a vehicle. It was here that a fellow inmate decided to start recruiting others and told him that he could get Quincy a job as a mafia hitman. When Quincy was released, he decided to buy a shotgun so he could start practicing. Man, I really wish he showed this kind of dedication to literally anything else. Quincy he started off this horrific crime spree on July 7th, 2002 by attacking a 51 year old homeless man who was sleeping at the time. Luckily this man was able to survive the attack. His crimes continued until he was arrested on August 14th, 2002. After his arrest and trial, Quincy received a sentence of death and is still on death row awaiting execution. His sentencing did not deter him from the criminal life, however, as in 2009, Quincy, along with another inmate, planned an attack on a correctional officer at the prison they both reside at. Quincy was in intended to be executed on January 8th, 2010, but there was a stay of execution that was accepted, and as of July 26th, 2022, literally just over a month ago, Quincy's death sentence was overturned. In our ninth spot, we have Albert DeSalvo. Albert DeSalvo, better known as the Boston Strangler, took the lives of 13 women between 1962 and 1964. He would strangle these women with a piece of their clothing before taking advantage of them. In January of 1967, he was sentenced to life imprisonment. A month later, him and two other inmates actually managed to escape from prison, and a full-scale manhunt ensued. Thankfully, it wasn't long until he was recaptured. However, in 1973, Albert was stabbed to death by another prisoner. In our number eight spot today, we have David Berkowitz. David Berkowitz, or the son of Sam, is an American serial killer who terrorized New York from July of 1976 to July of 1977. He took the lives of six people and wounded seven others, all while eluding the biggest manhunt in New York City history. He was one of those arrogant ones who leaves like little notes for the police promising to do it again, but his arrogant self was caught for his crimes and he was arrested on August 10th, 1977 and was indicted for his crimes. He confessed to all of them and claimed that he was just obeying the orders of a demon that had manifested itself in the form of a dog that belonged to his neighbor. He was found mentally competent to stand trial and he pleaded guilty to his crimes, which left him sentenced to six consecutive life sentences. He later admitted to making up the dog story, which like, yeah, duh. But he did say that he was a member of a violent satanic cult and his crimes were committed as a part of that. These claims were investigated, but no one has ever been able to confirm or deny them. In our number seven spot today, we have Tex Watson. Tex Watson was one of the central members of the Manson family, which was led by Charles Manson. And he was a willing participant for the horrible Tate and LaBianca crimes that took place on August 9th and 10th, 1969. In October of 1969, Tex knew his arrest was coming, so he fled to his home 
state of Texas, but was later arrested and extradited back to California. Once he was in California, he refused to talk or eat and ended up losing 55 pounds, which got him sent to get tested to see if he was fit to stand trial, which he was. In 1971, he was convicted on seven counts of first degree unalive and one count of conspiracy to commit unalive. He originally received a death sentence, but it ended up being commuted to life in prison. Get this, you guys, though, he was able to release a book while in prison and he got married and through conjugal visits he was able to have four children. Four children. But thankfully in 1996 they banned those kinds of visits for people serving life in prison and in 2003 he got divorced because his wife had met someone else. Like. I hope so. In our number six spot today, we have Scott Erskine. Early in life, Scott began to commit violent crimes against others that I truly cannot even speak about here on YouTube. They're so bad. He spent four years in prison for one of these crimes when he was around 17 years old, but when he was paroled after the four years, he immediately began committing crimes again. In 1993, Scott invited a woman who was waiting for the bus into his home and ended up holding her hostage for several days. After letting her go, he was quickly arrested and ended up being sentenced to 70 years in prison. This is when he had to submit DNA to a database and in March of 2001, that DNA was matched when the cold cases of the unsolved killings of Jonathan Sellers and Charlie Kiever were reopened. In 2004, a jury sentenced him to death and six days later he was transferred to San Quentin. In an interesting turn of events, Scott did die on death row, but it wasn't due to a scheduled execution. Scott died a couple of years ago in July of 2020 after contracting COVID-19. In our number five spot today, we have Charles Ng. Charles' story starts off shortly after he moved to the United States on a student visa. He dropped out after his first semester and soon after he was involved in a hit and run accident. He then tried to avoid prosecution by enlisting in the United States Marine Corps using false documents that stated his birthplace was within the United States. He was arrested by military police a year later for stealing automatic weapons and then somehow he escaped custody, headed back toward Northern California and this is where he met Leonard Lake who is another real piece of work. Charles did end up going away and serving a bit of time but it was only 18 months and he was back with Leonard and that is when the two started their crime spree. It is believed that together the pair took the lives of somewhere from 11 to 25 different people. When Leonard was caught and brought in for questioning, he sneakily took a cyanide pill he had hidden in his jacket and took his own life, but Charles ended up standing trial. He was convicted for 11 of the killings and he remains on death row at San Quentin. In our number four spot today we have Sean Great. Sean is a serial killer who committed a series of crimes from 2006 until he was apprehended in 2016. Throughout his decade of criminal activity, it is thought that he took the lives of at least five people. So basically, his story is a little confusing, but in September of 2016, Sean was arrested and later indicted for two killings, as well as a kidnapping, and harming a woman whose 911 call actually led to his arrest. At the same time, in another county next door, he was also being charged with two other deaths, as well as another one from all the way back in 2016. This final count from all of those years ago was actually an unsolved Jane Doe case who had been unidentified for 12 years. When Sean confessed to this crime, he wasn't even sure who she was, he just said he believed her name was Dana. On May 7th, 2018, Sean was convicted on two of the counts, and on March 1st, 2019, he pleaded guilty to two of the others, and on September 11th, 2019, he pleaded guilty to the additional count. In the end, he was sentenced to death and has remained on death row since that final plea and sentencing, and he is currently scheduled to be executed in 2025. In our number three spot today, we have the Zodiac Killer. This one had to make it on this list because while there are a plethora of terrifying people on this list, nothing is as terrifying as an uncaught serial killer and the Zodiac is definitely the most prolific of them all. The Zodiac Killer took the lives of five people in the San Francisco Bay Area between 1968 and October of 1969. He was most known for targeting young couples or a lone male cab driver. Despite two people luckily and thankfully escaping his attempted evil doings, he has still never been caught. While no one has heard from the Zodiac since 1974, the case remains active in many different counties and maybe one day we'll finally know who the real Zodiac is. In our number two spot today, we have Dale Housen and Samuel Dietman. Known as the serial shooters, the crimes these guys committed are definitely on the list of fears I have, which I'm pretty sure spawned from a Criminal Minds episode. These two were actively committing these crimes between May of 2005 and August of 2006. Basically, they were arsonists who would randomly set fire to objects, but they would also drive around and commit random drive 
by shootings. That's the really scary part. The fire thing is also bad, don't get me wrong. There's just something about completely random violence that absolutely terrifies me. In the end, a series of tips is what led investigators to identify the perpetrators of these horrible crimes. In particular, one from a friend of Samuel who explained that Sam had actually confessed to some of the killings one night while drinking. In Dale's trial, he was found guilty of 80 out of the 87 felony charges that were brought forth, and that was all in one single trial. In the end, he was sentenced to death six times, and his brother, who was later found out to have assisted in some of the crimes, was sentenced to 25 years. Samuel was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. In our number one spot today, we have the Doodler. While this nickname sounds very sweet, it, like everything else on this list, is very sinister. The nickname that this unidentified killer received is due to his practice of sketching his victims before taking their lives. This unidentified killer committed their crimes in the San Francisco area from January of 1974 to September of 1975, and they specifically targeted gay men. It is believed that 14 deaths can be attributed to this killer, while three others were injured in the process. Unfortunately, because of the stigma and sensitivity surrounding gay men at the time, the three who survived this monster were very reluctant when speaking with the authorities for fear of being outed as a result of it. This has led to there being very little information for them to work with in terms of identifying the man responsible. For a while, there was a primary suspect, but that person has never been officially charged because sadly, none of the survivors felt comfortable enough to testify in court. Mm -hmm.